fait une caméo qui est de vitesse sur une caméo. Put personal text in a directory, but only if you respect the directory schema. And we also have a tree organization of the data. This is very different from a database. Okay? Uh, for example, you see here, uh, I have a branch with people and uh, another branch with groups. I, I can have several branches like that. Separated with uh, commas, for example, or uh, use a mail one uh, column, mail two column, mail three column, mail four column. Okay, this is not the same uh, model as LDAP. So when you have to deal with an LDAP directory, you have to Two things that you have to know. Okay, first, and that is a connected protocol. That means you open a connection and you can, in this connection, do a lot of operations. Okay?
can use at the best, but it is not the uh, best way today to do, to, to do security. You have to use LDAP free because uh, in 1997, okay, I said, so almost 20 years that uh, this version of LDAP exists, but we know that some clients or some servers today only accept LDAP but it's a really bad idea to use LDAP2 nowadays. Of course, you will see that in pair, uh, the default LDAP version that we will use is LDAP2. code will uh, just uh, uh, flush, uh, close the flush object, delete the object, but we do, will not do an Big, big 
uh, these persons uh, are responsible for the fact that they are So, uh, the first thing to do is to say to the connection. Um, if I try to to show you wider. Uh, okay. So uh, I'm just doing here a new connection, okay? To localhost. So I have a an LDAP directory here. Here is OpenLDAP, okay, it started on localhost. And if I run my script here, I just will have to, uh, I, I say, okay, I'm connected. Okay. This is an object, so I just test if the object is defined or not. If it's defined, I'm connected, okay. And after, we will see that we will uh, do a bind. This is the authentication. Okay, donc, when you bind, you bind with a uh, distinguished name, which is not just a login, okay, which is a, the full string of the LDAP identifier of an okay. By login, you say, so uh, we can bind with the end or we can also bind anonymous, but we have to say hello. So even if you don't want to bind with a, a login, you just want to bind with a, as anonymous, please say hello, even if you're anonymous. You can bind anonymous. You can do SSL too. Someone know SSL? It's a way to delegate the authentication to other uh, uh, authentication source. And uh, of course, also a client certificate. So here, yeah, in the example, you, you can see here, I will just come on that. And we just do bind. Operation was in error or not. So if it is, I will have this code here. Uh, I'm, uh, so here I am here. And you can say, just to know for the script to, to be able to, to print the person who is connected, I use Just stop here for the moment. Okay, so I'm connected and I'm trying to put up the as this user. 
if I was authenticated through a client certificate, I would have done a, a matching of the client certificate to the client certificate. So now it's really simple, and now uh, we uh, so for four parameters. Uh, class equal uh, star etc. and uh, attributes you are not it's not mandatory to get all the attributes of the entry okay you can say I want to request this entry and I just want the phone number of this entry so if you do that you will have a quicker answer because of the network uh, packet which will be thinner that if you want to get all the attributes so you can return uh, no entry with a search, but the search is successful. Okay, it's not because you don't have any. Okay, it is not an error. It is because uh, what you search does not exist. Okay, so if you want an example, here. You can see a search, so it's a method that I apply on the LDAP object. And here I want to search all the person entries, okay, under the branch uh, all users. So I have a, a one scope, I say I just want the entry under this. Operation is good, okay, and then I will try to get the entries. So here I get the count, okay, how many entries were returned. And here I have a, an array of entries with this method, so I can uh, do a loop on this. And here is a simple uh, method to print an LDF output of the entry, okay, but you can get any uh, values. Uh, if you need it in the entry here. Uh, with an API, so you can manipulate an entry. This is the same entry object if you get it from the adapt directory of, or if you get it from an LD file, okay? Whenever the source is uh, a flat file or the uh, adapt directory, you get the same object. So it's really easy to manipulate, to get an adapt uh, entry and to output in a leaf or to do uh, the reverse. So we we'll try to, to see if it works. So first, here is my directory. We will see, OK. <laughs> Okay, this is the result, and if you see uh, the log on the server side, we, we will see all the operations we have done, okay? You see the bind, and you see uh, in the result the error code, okay? This is the server, and I'm doing an who am I extended operation, XT, extended operation, a search, we see all the parameters uh, on the server side that we used here, and uh, 
the attributes, and here the result. Okay, and the three entries. Here the uh, directory sent the entries, and now we are in our code, and we pass the entries in the code. Okay. So for now, it's really really easy. So, entries, I already uh, say that, so you can uh, do what you want on entries. <coughs> and now uh, we'll uh, do some modification on the directory. Okay, so the first uh, kind of modification is to add or delete a, a whole entry, okay? And then we will see how we can modify an existing entry. So to add a, an entry, you have to give as parameter uh, an entry object, or you just give the distinguished name on all the attributes of the entry. And if you want to delete an entry, you can give the entry as a parameter or, uh, or the distinguished name, okay? So if we look at some code, here is a sample entry, okay? So I created an entry object here, very easy, uh, the distinguished name here and all the attributes. So in LDAP, we have to give the classes, the object classes of the entry, and then to provide all the attributes, okay? This is because next I will have some tests about the password policy, so I created a password, okay? A very secure password, and uh, the password policy is the configuration of the the policy, how many uh, bind we can do uh, or without being locked, etc. Et okay, so this is entry, and then we have just to call the add operation to add the entry. Okay, so uh, then to make the test, we uh, then have to modify. So the scissor. We put the entry here and we say, okay, I want to retest the description. So we will test also the modification. And search and get the description here, okay? And to finish the test, we will delete the entry here. And then we can say, okay, the job is done. So, and the
uh, this is the standard, so uh, how it works, you have uh, the control, which is sent by the LF client, so it is our script here, and the control says to the uh, LF directory, I'm a client, and I'm aware of the platform policy method. So you can send me back the platform policy method. And when the server knows that, when the when you do a notification, for example, the LF directory is sent back to the web. And that is the password policy control. And uh, if we look at the code, I will just add the entry. Okay. So we already did that. And here we use the password policy control. So we create a new object, which is the <coughs> password policy control. And we will try to lock the account. Okay. So I will do an authentication with my entry, but with a bad password, OK? And uh, I have a configuration in my directory that says you can log in uh, four times with a bad uh, password, but the five time uh, you will be locked, OK? So I should be locked here uh, when I, I run this code. But to know that I'm locked, I have to implement the password policy control and to get the uh, response of the server. If I don't do that, I just will have an error message that say uh, your password is incorrect, okay? But with this, I will uh, be able to have more information and uh, I will see this message which, which will uh, say to me, this is this error of the password policy, okay? We will, we will see that here I just uh, print uh, the error code, which is a, a, a number. Okay, you have to translate this number into a, a human readable message to say, okay, the number zero is uh, account locked, etc. Okay, and uh, when it's done, I have to bind again as administrator. Why? Because I want to uh, delete the entry. Okay. And to delete the entry, I have to have uh, the administrator account. But you see that here we are always in the same connection, OK? So you can, in the same connection, bind with multiple accounts, multiple identities. And when you do a, a method, it will uh, know <coughs> what are the latest identity, uh, the latest bonded identity, and use it to do the operation, OK? So. Here is the complete, complete code. So we have a slip here. And then we see that the last time, the first time <coughs> we, are, we, we, we run the same code here. And uh, here we don't have any password policy message. But the last time we have a password policy message. Okay? And we know that uh, the one error uh, means your account is locked. So with this, you can implement the password policy on server side and uh, get uh, all password policy messages on client side. So uh, of course, uh, some example of pairs uh, programs that use it. Uh, a first uh, module is Apache, Apache Session uh, LDAP. Who know Apache Session modules? It's a, it's a sort of, uh, kind of framework to, to store uh, sessions. You can store session in files, in a database, etc. You use it in a uh, web application. And you say, I want to create a session with this module. And uh, this module uh, is responsible to store the session, get the session. Okay, so you can use any backend, uh, no, no SQL backends, file, that file, what you want. And no one uh, other, uh, we, we created uh, this uh, backend, LDAP backend, to store uh, 
Apache sessions. Okay? This is on GitHub, you can on GitHub and on CPAN, you can get you can get it. And uh, you just can store with it uh, sessions in an LDAP directory. Why? Because I love LDAP. Okay? Uh, and you can also see this. We managed to have indexed sessions in an LDAP directory, so we create index to get more uh, powerful uh, requests on the LDAP. Um, I wrote some scripts too. Uh, for example, monitoring scripts. A lot of monitoring is done with Spare, okay? And uh, to check and, and adapt this, uh, you can use some scripts and then adapt to the API. I have to talk about it. Uh, in that video, it's a web single time project. Uh, access control and acceleration. So, um, we need to do a lot of things with Adapt. Of course, we need to have issues with Adapt. And we have to uh, 
work on the specific data and so we use the API to manage the data and get them compatible with the Method can be, can be uh, asynchronous, asynchronous okay, yeah. like, like you say. So you can say, I, I don't want to expect uh, the end of the operation to get the first entry. But you, I never join uh, much code around this, so I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> so you know I'm not the developer of the MetaDAP uh, module, okay? But uh, I'm, I'm on the list, and uh, of course, the code is uh, hosted on GitHub, so it's, it's really easy to, to do pull request. Of course. Thank you.